Good to be here again, kids. Uh, we're looking forward to tomorrow. This is Saturday, tomorrow's Sunday. Uh, we're gonna be together in the Blue Room. And that will be so much fun. There'll be different rules and regulations that we have to go by. And uh, that's okay, they'll be explained to you. But we're gonna be together, we're gonna be studying God's Word, we're gonna be having some fun. Uh, I'll be asking you a lot of questions about what's happening during this, this time of the COVID uh, uh, stuff. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, just be like old times, I hope and pray. I hope you're gonna be there. Those who aren't there, I'm gonna give you a little idea what we're gonna be talking about. So let's get started. Uh, ready, get seated, get set. I didn't say the word yet, because some of you are still moving around. Go. So we've been talking over the last several lessons about the church that was started in Jerusalem at the time that Jesus brought the Holy Spirit down on the apostles and they did miraculous things. Many of the miraculous things that Jesus did himself so that he, they could show the people that they're doing this through the power of God. And by the way, they always said that it was through the Holy Spirit that they were doing these things. So it wasn't like magic or something else. And that was very important. So many people were getting saved. Not just many, thousands of people were getting saved. Now, the Jewish leaders didn't like this because they were all caught up in the Old Testament and the law. Nothing wrong with that, but they used that as an absolute, this is how you get to God. Well, Jesus said, no, this is how you get to God. Through me, I came down to die on the cross and pay the penalty for your sins and rose again to show that I am God. And so when he went back up into heaven, he, he gave the Holy Spirit so they have all this power. So the people were getting saved and these Jewish, the, the Jewish leadership didn't like it at all. And, and, and there was always problems. Many of the problems started because, well, Paul and John and Philip and Stephen would proclaim the gospel and condemn the Jewish people who they said crucified Christ. Well, they didn't like that. We know Stephen's situation. When Stephen uh, was, was before the Sanhedrin, when C Stephen was before uh, the judges of the Jewish people, he really ripped them. He really said that you're, you, you, you missed the whole point and the Messiah came and you missed him and you murdered him and you killed him and they didn't like that. And so remember what they did was they killed him. Men that, that, that were picked and chosen to, to stone him to death, which would be a horrible death, took off their jackets and laid them at the feet of a guy named Saul, and they just stoned him and stoned him until he died. And you remember, he, he saw Jesus standing up at the right hand of God, which was an amazing thing because Stephen was about to go and meet him face to face. What a phenomenal picture that was. But what happened was, now this guy who was holding the coats, whose name is Saul, was a smart guy, a powerful guy, a guy that the leadership of the Jews liked a lot because he hated Christians. At that time, they were called uh, the people of the way. And, and so he began to persecute the people in Jerusalem. Now, persecuting the people in Jerusalem means he began to go into their houses. He began to go into the synagogues and identify who these Jewish people of the way were. And when they would go home, he'd get them and he would throw them in jail. And many of them were killed. They died as martyrs for Christ. Well, there was a tremendous uh, leaving of Jerusalem. It dispersed the believers all over. And there was a city, Damascus, that the rumor was, there's a lot of Christians there. And that just made Saul so angry. So he went to the leadership and said, I want to go there and I want to find Jews. I want to find Jews who are, are believers in the way. And I want to grab them and take them and bring them to jail. I want to punish them bad. So the leaders of the Jewish people, uh, the priests and the Sanhedrin, and gave Saul a writ, a paper that said, Saul can go to all of the synagogues and you better listen to what he says. And so Saul took off. Now here's the deal. You know, the Christians met all together in the synagogues. They opened the word of God and they heard the word of God and then it would break into small groups like, like our churches do today and they would study the word of God. The disciples, uh, the apostles would, would 
uh, have all this information to give them from the Lord because they were inspired by the Holy Spirit and that's where we get the whole New Testament. So, Saul gets a bunch of guys. They were probably mercenaries or military guys because he was going to go and he was going to go to the synagogues, identify who they were, wait till they get home, drag them out. And so he was really, really powerful and angry and everybody was afraid of him. So he's on his road to Damascus. And they're almost to Damascus. And all of a sudden, this great light happens. Let me, let me, let me read it to you because there's nothing better than the word of God to hear the truth of the word of God. He says, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now, that, that's a, a, a phenomenal issue. Jesus comes down out of heaven. In his glory, this light shines. He, so, uh, Saul falls down, and, and he hears the voice of Jesus. That had to be a scary experience for Saul, a confusing experience for Saul. And here's what happened. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Now, that's a scary thing. Now, he said, you're persecuting me. And now Saul must have been a little bit confused with that because he didn't persecute Jesus. Jesus was dead, he rose again. He was persecuting people of the way. But Jesus was saying, hey, if you're persecuting any of my people who believe in me, and have the Holy Spirit, it's like persecuting me. That would be a horrible thing to, to, to be judged for persecuting Jesus. And so Jesus said to him, go to Damascus and you'll get information. Here's what the information was, because we know in the next few verses that he went to Damascus, they found a street called Straight. They found a man there named Judas, not the Judas that, that sold out Christ. This was another Judas. And Saul went into his house. And there, he was there for three days. And all he did was pray. He didn't eat or drink anything. He was fasting. He had to be doing something quite amazing because he had all the information of the Old Testament was talked about Jesus. Jesus now came to him and talked to him. He's got to figure all this out. Now, he got up. Well, he didn't get up. Not by himself. Because he was blind. He couldn't see. He got up. And the men helped him around there. And they went to Damascus. Now, Jesus comes, and there's a man in Damascus. He's a holy man, a righteous man, a godly man, and his name was Ananias. Not the Ananias of Ananias and Sapphira in chapter 4, but this was another Ananias. And so Jesus calls him and says, Ananias, here's what I want you to do. Oh, first of all, the Lord is talking to him again. That's an amazing thing. He must know if the Lord, if that is the Lord, and he's going to tell me to go and do something, then I have to go and do it because he prepared me to do this work. And if that's the case, he already has the results done. So he says, I want you to go to a street called Straight. Oh, sounds familiar. I want you to find the house of a man called Judas. Okay. And in there, you're going to find a man by the name of Saul of Tarsus. Wait a minute. Now, if this was me, Ananias didn't do this. But if it was me, I'd have said, what? You know who this man is? Jesus. He's killing the Jews. He's dragging people into jail. He wants to destroy the way. That's what I would have thought. And I would have thought, well, maybe this is an ambush. And I'm going to get there, and they're going to take me, and I won't. But he didn't do that. He went. And here's what he did. Lord Annas answer, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about the man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on him, all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles 
and their kings and before the people of Israel, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. He was going to be a superstar for Christ. The murderer of Christians was going to be a superstar for Christ. And Ananias went. When he goes there, he opens the door and he says to, to Saul, Saul, my brother. So Jesus must have told him, hey, Saul's going to be converted. And Saul's going to be powerful. And Saul's going to serve God. And he's going to put all his trust in God. And the name of Jesus will be proclaimed everywhere, no matter what. And it was an amazing thing. And you know what happened? As Saul began to preach and teach, they changed his name to Paul. Now, this is a picture of a story, not just a story, but a historical event that happened to show that when God calls us, we should go. Why? Because we can trust God. He will do what he promises to do, and if he uses us, he expects us to obey, and the end is already taken care of. So Ananias went and witnessed to, to Saul. Ananias went and he, he spoke the gospel to him. He taught him. He discipled him so that he can go and be a great servant of God. The same thing happens with us. If God calls us and we, we answer the call and accept him as Lord and Savior, now we can be the kind of a, an example that Saul became. We can be the kind of an example that Ananias was. All we know about Ananias is he loved God and obeyed God. And because of that, Paul became one of the greatest witnesses ever. Could that happen to you? Oh yeah, we're living in times Times that are really weird, times that are really bad, people turning from God. And you could be the one who witnesses to somebody. And that somebody gets saved. And that somebody becomes one of the greatest evangelists the world has ever seen. Well, let's pray. Father God, we come before thee and we thank you for these, these historical events that happen in Scripture, Father. We call them stories, but stories don't do it, uh, honor to, to the Word of God. These are more than stories. These are facts that occurred that you told the apostles to write down. Father, thank you for an Ananias, Father. Thank you that, that, that there was a Judas who opened his home. Thank you for what Paul became, Father, as examples of what we can be if we trust you. Have faith, that confident assurance. Have faith in something that we can't see, but because we know God, we know that it's true. Father, bless these kids. And Father, help us to be together on Sunday once again to glorify you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Always fun to be there, guys. See you later.